Mm. Good morning. We're going to talk about installing the Bontech extruders on the Raise 3D N2 Plus. It's a large format machine, two extruders, and it's good. But with the precision and the reliability that Bontech offers, it's going to level up that machine and make it even better. However, when my buddy Pooch and I installed this on the Raise 3D N2 Plus, we did this a while ago and we already filmed an intro. So I'm going to let you have that intro, just a sec. There we go. TV's up. Enjoy the intro. I'll see you when it's over. Hey, it's Joel. I have this Bontech dual drive extruder for the Raise 3D N2. I should install it, but I could, I could use some help. It's always better to work with friends. Could anyone help me? Why, certainly I could help you, good sir. Hey, look, it's my friend Pooch. Nice box. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that by. It's very colorful. Yeah, there we're we going to print something nice with that later. We will later, but okay. right now it's Bontech time. Yeah. You want to help me install it? Absolutely, I do. Well, good. We're going to do it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Ah, oh, there we go. It's over. Well, that was fun. I hope that worked out well for you. So according to the little sheet within this box, the Bontech Dual Drive Extruder is the ultimate upgrade for your 3D printing system. And it talks about the grip. So the way Bontech extruders work is it's geared. So rather than having a hub bolt pressing against a bearing to pull the filament through, the hub bolt essentially is in contact with another one. And there's some teeth on the outside that grab it. And so it's grabbing filament from both sides. And this is great because you get a much more precise driven filament to your nozzle, which means you're going to have a more precise extrusion. It also says experience true reliability and double your speed. The Bontech extruder's exceptional pushing force allows you to even double your printing speed. Well, that sounds kind of cool. Bontech sent this to me to install. They had no requirements for a review. They had no requirements for me to use it. They just said, hey, put it in your Raise 3D N2 Plus. You might like it. I was intrigued because the Raise 3D machine is already decent as far as extrusion goes, but I've experienced the Bontech gear system on the Prusa machine. I've experienced it on the Pulse XE from Matter Hackers. When it's gripping the filament from both sides, you could technically hold on to the filament and your printer will lift itself off the ground. It's crazy the amount of grip that these had. And so PLA and rigid filaments, uh, you know, I just wanted to make sure it worked with that. But at the same time, I thought, this is gonna be great for flexible filaments because it's not having to push a flexible against a bearing. It's actually grabbing it from both sides and forcing it through. That was the ultimate test. When Pooch is up, we did do the unboxing. Inside the box, as you'll see from this footage, it's neatly packed. The steppers and uh, the case that it's in was is, is a great package. It was packed well with styrofoam. A uh, small little box holds a lot of promise. It was, it was really, really great. And what it replaces is essentially this. This is the standard offering for the Raise 3D N2 Plus. Filament runs through these two channels and on the back there are stepper drivers. And these, as you can see, they have a hob bolt or, you know, a, a gear, a mesh or whatever. And it pushes, it pushes the filament against bearings and that leads it through the channel. This is actually a decent design, but you're still not using the two sides to grab the filament. And so it can be improved. And that's what we were going to do with the Bontex. Before we go further, though, I do want to I, I want to show you something. So the way that this works, there's a, there's a piece of uh, acrylic, and with these three screws that come out, now you've exposed the filament channel, and it's wonderful for cleaning. Even though I'm replacing it with the Bontex, uh, I I am going to miss this. This is a this is a really good idea by Raise 3D, and I'm I'm glad I was able to experience this. When you're installing the Bontex on the Raise 3D N2 Plus, it is a little bit advanced because you do have to adjust some things on the control board, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. Essentially, what you need to do is you need to remove this and then replace it with something and then you adjust the voltage. So first we need to talk about marking the wires, removing the extruders and the filament channels themselves. So as you go through the instructions, uh, it, it kind of gives you a step-by-step -step idea on what to do. They're available on the web. Uh, Pooch was reading the instructions and he was helping me do it. You do need to get the hot glue off of the motor connectors. They are hot glued in place. It's an easy thing to remove. It's not bad and the hot glue keeps it there, but it's just one of those things you, you have to do. Also, when you're removing the wires from the steppers, you do need to label them because you don't wanna, well, here, look, look. 
top and bottom, right and left, up and down, rain and sun. I don't know, <laughs> label them however you want, but you just wanna make sure that you label and know which of the wires went to which motors because that's important for how you connect it back up. And lastly, one of the most important steps is removing the cable chain from everything. That cable chain carries all of the wires to the, the hot end itself. And you, you do need to remove that because you're replacing it. Once you get that out of the way, it's time to put the Bontech part on. And that's, it's really kind of simple itself. Essentially, you're just putting it on, screwing into place, attaching the cables, and then you're, you're kind of good to go to the next step. The wires from the cable chain do connect up with a breakout board that's, uh, that's, that's on that moving head. And so you do get a new cover that comes with the Bontech extruders and you, you need to swap that in and, and make sure that's in place. Also, this means you can put the cable chain back on, which is great, but one of the link covers needs to be removed because the wires themselves need to come out of the cable chain just a little bit sooner. And if you, if you pop out one of those covers, there's enough room, no problem. Also with the Raise 3D N2 Plus, I guess there was two revisions. There was ones with black motors and there were ones with silver motors. I had the one with the black motors and it meant that the rear motor, the right motor, the one that you mark with the, <laughs> that I marked with the R, the pins on the connector had to be swapped because we needed the motor to turn in the opposite direction. So both of the steppers are on the back of this, where on the Bontech, one is in the back one is in the front. Because you're changing the position, you need to make the motor spin a different direction. And by taking the two pins and swapping them, you accomplish that. At this point, you're done. <laughs> you're literally done. This is the, this is simple. I mean, there's a lot of steps that you need to follow, but it's simple. I mean, it was so simple. Pooch and I could do it when we were only half trying and Pooch wasn't even reading the directions correctly. Pooch. No, it's just my fault for not reading the instructions it carefully. Once you've got the bits on the machine head done, you need to go into the machine itself. First, through the UI, you change the E steps for the motors from, what was it, 92, 95, that they were at to 415, 415. Also, then you need to change the voltage at the stepper drivers. And that means you open up the side of the filament door, you take off the side for the control box, and there they are. Get a voltmeter or a multimeter and put one end on the potentiometer screw on the stepper driver and then one on the negative lead for the power. And you're checking for voltage. And mine, I think similar to other raised machines, by default was 0.95 volts. It says it needs to be at 500 millivolts or 0.5 volts. That's great. You need to turn the screw very, very slowly for adjustments. It's best if you have a plastic tip screwdriver. If you have a metal tip screwdriver, it's possible because you need to do this while the machine's on. Just don't touch anything else with the screwdriver while you're doing it. If you want to read the values while you're turning it, Keith, he's known as Tinkers on the Twitter, he has a good thing. You, uh, the one end, you use uh, an alligator clip to clip onto your screwdriver and then you're touching the potentiometer and that'll give you a reading and you can see the reading as you're adjusting. Otherwise, you need to adjust and then remeasure. I actually got it to 0.52 volts, so it's close enough. You just don't want to provide too much voltage to the stepper driver because then it could overheat. One minute to core meltdown. Shut up! And then that was it, that was it. You just had to bring up the machine and start printing some things. No profiles needed to be changed in their slicer software. How'd it work? Let me show you. First, I, I went and printed this. Uh, it's it's uh, Fernando's wavy vase, one of the wavy vases. Uh, I did this on the right nozzle and I just wanted to make sure it was working. The extrusions on it are fantastic. Uh, there are some problems, right? I don't know if you can see those, but essentially there was some icky stuff on the nozzle that once it heated, because it hadn't been used in a while, once it heated up, it got a little uh, icky stuff that dropped down in there, but uh, it was fine. And I realized the extrusion was going well, so I, apparently I threw it on the floor. But then, but then we went with this, and this is uh, a semi-flex from Ninja Flex, and I put it through the right nozzle. I did it at 20, 25 millimeters per second, and in vase mode, of course, I just wanted to see that the Bontech was sending the flexible through. Uh, I did it at 235C, and it's good. Yeah, those layers stuck really, really well. Uh, I was, I'm really impressed. Well, I mean, Ninja Flex is great material and their Semi Flex is awesome, 
but you want to make sure that the, the layers are adhering. Not only are they adhering, but you want to make sure everything is even. And if you if you look at that, those are those are some good layers. I mean, when you're putting it vase mode, it's kind of wobbly. And so there are some inconsistencies at the very, very top, but um, I love it. Let's see, Let, hold on to my coffee. Mmm, boy, if that's a coffee cozy right there. The flexible material printed great. I was really impressed with it. I had visions of printing more flexible stuff. It was great. But what about dual extrusion? These two little guys right here. I designed uh, a small little test in Fusion 360. This one, uh, this one didn't adhere to the bed too well. But I just wanted to make sure that once I configured it and, and uh, made sure that the offsets for the nozzle were correct, I could make this. And I did. Look at that. Just a little, tiny little dual extrusion. That's it. I just used a white wall on that. Then I thought, what about dual with flexible? There you go. Look at that. It did break away. Oh, no. Oh, no. But I don't care. It's just a proof of concept, just to prove that I could. You'll tell there's some discoloration right here because as it's printing, <laughs> I guess 235 was a little too high for the, for the flexible and it leaked. It was leaking out of the nozzle as it was printing this. And so as the left nozzle was printing this side, the right nozzle was just leaking red flexible filament all over it. Uh, it's still okay though. I'm still okay with it because this was just, this was just to confirm that it would work and it certainly did. I can see myself printing flexibles faster because it's gripping on both sides. I'm gonna be honest with you, the Race 3 N2 Plus, while it's a great machine, having the two nozzles side by side is probably the worst way to do dual extrusion. So most likely what I'm gonna do is tuck one of the nozzles out of the way and just use one side while I print things incredibly large. And I got some large things coming up that I need to print on that machine. It's gonna be really cool to see how well the Bontech perseveres over time because I want reliable, consistent extrusions over hundreds if not thousands of hours. And that is what it's supposed to deliver. There we go, uh, kind of a, technical-ish video for the channel, which is great. A big thanks to Pooch for helping me uh, helping me install all of that. That was really nice of him to come by. Pooch is, is as you know, is Repcord. Uh, I'll put a link to his website down in the description, maybe to his Twitter. He's a good dude, you should follow him. Beyond all that, I hope you found that interesting and I hope it inspires you to do some upgrades to your machines. Don't be afraid to break open the control box, to take a look inside and to get yourself familiar with what's in there because you never know when a simple multimeter is going to help upgrade your extrusion experience. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. Ring that bell if you like coffee. Beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. And as always, high five.